and welcome to this version of Carpenter's Insurance. And what I want to teach you all today is about major medical. Now, you might be wondering what I'm doing with all this in front of me, what has to do with major medical, well, absolutely nothing. But the reason I have it here is because I've learned from realtors who are master marketers is that when I get one of their postcards in the mail and it has some kind of killer cake or something on it, and then on the back it talks about what they do and what they sold, I keep that card. So my thinking is, I'm going to show you guys how to make an awesome salmon with brown sugar and lemon zest on top while also teaching you all about major medical insurance. So that's what we'll be working on today. So first, let me just get the ingredients started out for you. So I have right here next to me my buddy, my youngest daughter, Serena. Hello. And she is actually going to prepare the dish. That's how easy it is. I'm not a cook, but I learned this dish from Alton Brown and my family just loved it. So now all of a sudden I got to make it all the time. <laughs> so to begin with, I'll give you all the ingredients. Serena? Do we need one third cup of dark brown sugar? Do we have that? Voila. Then we also need one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt. We have that. Ta da! And then we also need one teaspoon of freshly ground pepper. Close. <laughs> Got that. Now that we all pre done, because that's pretty simple to do. The hardest part is this thing called zesting. I didn't know what zesting was, but it turns out you got to buy these things, which I got one for me and one for my daughter. You want the big one? That one. <laughs> okay, you can have that one. <laughs> and she's going to start the zesting. So that's the part up here, and you got to scrape it off. And you, you need one and a half teaspoons of zest, and that's a lot of zesting. So she'll be working on that while we get into the other aspects of the major medical insurance. Now, the background, the reason I want to teach you all about major medical insurance is because when I started this business of mine, Carpenter Insurance, about seven years ago after leaving the big companies, I had zero customers and I had one employee and since then, thanks to you all calling and our great service and saving you all money, we've grown over to 5,000 customers. Now mixed in with that is I had to go from one employee to 10. Now at first it was pretty easy because the one employee was part of the Air Force, I didn't worry about medical insurance. But lately, and I'm a little slow learning, but I've been hearing the staff whining and crying about they're sick, their kid's out of school, they don't have insurance, and I've always shunned away from it because I'm saying to myself, I can't afford that $500, $700 a month for group insurance. It's just ridiculous. So then one day out of the blue, not that long ago, my friend slash competitor called me up and said, hey Ed, you got to hook up with this Rogers Benefit Group because we're selling a ton of major medical insurance to the groups. They're beating the current prices other people have and they're saving them a ton of money. You ought to give them a call and sell it through your company. Well, my idea was, well, let me see if I like them for my staff because they need it. And I don't have a lot of money, but I know my staff needs it. Plus, I've realized in the past I've lost some great employees that I wasn't able to hire because they always ask, do you have group insurance? And I'd say no because I knew nothing about it. So anyways, I gave them a call and Luke showed up at my door and actually showed up three or four times. And we grinded and chat and got the staff there because I didn't want my staff to buy something that when he left it was a piece of junk and they were mad at me because I was stuck with it. So I called him up, he came over and we sat down and it turned out the price was fantastic. All that crazy stuff that we'll get into a little bit about, you know, you got to have a minimum of four, you got to have somebody that qualify. I had no clue about all that stuff. So today we're privileged to have Luke with us and on top of that, I brought my wife down, my beautiful bride, Barbara Carpenter, and this is my friend Luke with the Rogers Benefit Group. Let me tell you, these guys put it all together. Me and my buddy Serena here, we zest, we make the stuff, and when I go to the doctor, I'm not feeling good, I just want to go and get better and say, what do I got to pay? Now, a lot of times I go down to the doctor's office, and I know in my mind I got to pay 12 or 25 bucks, and the little girl back there will say, Oh, you owe us $100 because you haven't met the deductible. I don't care what the story is. I just pay it. And then when I get home, my wife says, we have met that. She deals with that nightmare stuff that comes in. I mean, I pay all the bills. I run the business. I pay all those bills. But when it comes to that medical stuff, it scares me because I'll get this bill saying, hey, man, you owe $3,000. And my heart stops. And my wife will be like, no, no, no. We only owe really 20% of the allowable. And some crazy story. I'm just like, what are you talking about? <laughs> so she takes care of all that. So that's why I have her here today because all I want to know is what's the price and are my employees going to be covered? She knows all the details because I asked my staff, they do that language for you out there that are really into the details about what does it cover and what is a PPO and what is an HMO and all that crazy stuff. And Luke, 
my hat goes off to him because he really went to the ring with us. It was close to four days he was out there before I decided to go with him. But it was inexpensive, he's very professional, and I'm glad to have him part of my team. So I'm going to go back over here to zesting with my daughter and let these two get into the nitty gritties for all you out there that are into that kind of thing. Thanks, okay. guys. Thanks, Ed. Mm -hmm. Well, Luke, I am really thankful that you came over because I do understand all this and it has been a nightmare, you know, dealing with the different health insurance that I've had to deal with in the last 25 years. But uh, now that we're getting one for our business, and I'm very glad that we're doing that, but I had some questions and I was hoping that you could maybe fill in the blanks for some of these things. Um, and, and I wanted to start out by just asking, what are some of the major types of health insurance plans I mean I know I've heard HMO PPO ABC I mean there's all, right. all kinds out there can you explain those yeah absolutely firstly thank you for having me and um, I'm happy to help you and your family and your business so uh, as far as explaining the PPO and the HMO and the POS those acronyms really stand for a preferred provider organization that's a PPO and HMO is a health maintenance organization mm -hmm. and a POS is a point of service uh, network. They're just different types of networks. Um, your preferred provider organization, or preferred provider organization is going to be your, your broadest network, um, and actually the carriers that uh, we work with have the largest network in the state of Florida. So it's going to be your most easily accessible, where you're going to get your best rates and your best discounting, and, and your copay is going to apply the most, which we'll get into later. Uh, your HMO, your health maintenance organization, where that comes into play where people are usually asking about whether or not they need a referral to go see a specialist. Um, a health maintenance organization is specifically designed to do exactly that, maintain health by making an employee go directly to their uh, primary care physician that they list on their application to decide whether or not it's really needed for them to go to a specialist. Mm -hmm. That way they're not going to a specialist when it's not needed or, um, and incurring unnecessary costs. However, with some of our plans that we, ha that we have to offer to employees um, through the group plans, you can actually have what's called an open access setup. So you have an HMO network, but with PPO benefits. They're able to go see a specialist without having to have a referral, which most people are, are worried about. They would just have to pay that specific specialist copay. Say they were to have to go see a primary care physician and there, uh, there wasn't time to see theirs because uh, they couldn't get in. Maybe it's a very busy practice. Uh, but they wanted to see a primary care physician as soon as possible. They can go see a different primary care physician, physician, and only be subject to that specialist copay, which is really neat. Versus on the traditional HMO uh, plans, you actually have to go see your your primary care physician. Or if you go out of uh, out of network or out of that what, the one that you've listed, you majority of the time have no coverage, and so you're stuck with the entire bill which is not very fair to the employee, and, and that's oftentimes when you get those, those ugly calls. Oh, yeah. Um, your point of service is going to be very similar to your PPO plan, except it's on an HMO network. So it's going to have the benefits of, like I talked about, the PPO being able to go outside of your primary care physician and have that um, out-of-network benefit, but uh, you're on an HMO network, which is going to be a smaller network. So that's going to be your differences right there between, between the different types of networks. Okay, well that clears it up a lot. Uh, the other thing that I didn't really understand, um, are we going to be able to have multiple plans for our employees to choose from? Because, you know, as you know, every family is different and some people are single family, some are multiple with children, some Absolutely. have health issues, some are, you know, never get sick. That's a fantastic question <laughs> and it's one of the things we stress about plan design when it comes to working with Carpenters Insurance Agency and Rogers Benefit Group. Um, the industry has moved away from providing one rich plan to all employees and only paying it at 50% because 50% is really the minimum by state mandate for an employer to pay for the employee's cost only, not their dependents, just the employee cost only. What we do is we recommend that they buy not as rich of a benefit, but still a good benefit at 100%, so a base plan, and then offer three to four to five different plans, depending on the size of the group, uh, to their employees to let them choose which plan best fits their family. Like you said, every family is different. Um, you may have a very healthy individual and employee that they don't need that very rich, rich benefit. So when we go in there for a benefit discussion, it's not really a benefit discussion to them, it's a payroll deduction. Because they're saying, well, how much is going to get taken out of my paycheck? 
because they don't they really use the uh, the health insurance they may use it the once a year to go get their physical and for uh, generic antibiotics every once in a while so that's what's really neat about the plan design is doing that providing a base plan and letting the employees buy up um, that's some of the benefits of working with property insurance agency that you'll be able to have along with that when you provide that base plan at 100 percent it allows the employees that get that plan that don't need to buy up to have extra money to fund their 401k you know, because we all need to save for retirement, and yeah. people do it. To buy more life insurance, you can never have enough life insurance. To buy dental insurance for them and their family, or vision, you know, whatever they need. So it really Whoa. puts the onus of the decision making onto the employee, and they're more grateful because to them, they're truly getting a benefit at 100 percent. And they're able to pick out exactly what they need for exactly. their family. Absolutely, that's okay. that's the point behind the whole. Well, concept. and you mentioned that you'll come into the office and and you'll do you actually sit down with each of the employees individually? Absolutely. And um, talked about their specific needs to help them choose which plan would be right for that yes. one person. Yes. Wow. Each client is different. Each each group that we deal with that uh, Ed and I will go into um, is different because. Depending on the industry type, for instance, an automotive place, they maybe can't pull all their techs into the office to discuss group health benefits. So on that case-by-case -case basis, we may deal with one or two employees at a time presenting to them. But in uh, Ed's office, when we enrolled his group, um, we were able to bring, just essentially over the lunch hour, bring everyone together. You know, we'll bring in bagels, donuts, lunch, talk about the plan as a whole. After we get done talking about the plan and, and what's being offered to them as a whole, a true benefit meeting. We let them fill out their applications and then we'll still be hanging around for them to ask any personal questions, pull us off to the side, something specific, and, and help them go through the application it process. It's a lot easier than an HR director just handing over the pack and saying, fill us out and bring it back by next week, you know. <laughs> so it, it, employees really appreciate it when you do, do that because then they have, like you said, an understanding for what they're buying or, or what they're having to pay for or what their employer is actually providing to them that beforehand they never thought of as a benefit. So it helps, it helps retain employee loyalty. Um, like Ed was saying earlier, he's lost some employees due to that. Mm -hmm. um, a happy, you know, a healthy workforce is a happy workforce, is a productive workforce. So. Well, that's a great opportunity, though, for different businesses that can have whatever their employees need. I mean, Absolutely. It's, it's not one size fits all. No, it's not at all. very personalized. I like that. Um, another thing that I've had a lot of my friends ask me, you know they get confused about the terminologies mm -hmm. in the health world yeah. uh, and maybe you could explain the difference between say deductible uh, co-insurance because you know you go into some doctor's office it's like what's your co-payment right. and some of them say what's your co-insurance or right. your cost share or yep. your you know what is what does some of those terminologies mean that's another great question because when I go when we go to present a group that's the first thing we get into when we talk about health insurance to the employees because those are the main things that people worry about there's actually four things like you're saying there's a deductible there's the uh, the copay the co-insurance and then actually the max out of pocket you know how much right. how much are they really going to be on the hook for if they're hospital hospitalized or something catastrophic were to happen the neat thing about our carriers that we work with is that those first three things that I talked about your deductible your copay and your co-insurance all go to that max out of pocket so when you see that on your plan benefit summary you don't have to be so scared of that large number because your deductible say it's a thousand or two thousand is going to be taken out of that your copays that you've been paying throughout that year to go see your physician or the specialist is going to be taken out of that and then the co-insurance would be the percentage amount of the bill after you've met your deductible Okay. that you are responsible for. So, for instance, a 50% coinsurance would mean that if you had a $2,000 bill and you had a $1,000 deductible, that first $1,000 you would be responsible for. The second $1,000 you'd be responsible for $500, 50% of that bill. Right. That would go continue to happen. The coinsurance, if you met your deductible, coinsurance would continue to happen until you met your max out-of-pocket, um, which would be, say, 5000 Okay. So that's how that works. Those are your differences. Well, what about, now I've heard some people ask about uh, zero deductible, and I'm yeah. not familiar with that, but what is covered? What, what's that all about? A lot of the times nowadays, um, thanks to the Affordable Health Care Act, uh, you, you'll actually see zero dollars on your benefit summary. What that means is that it's, it's pr for mainly for preventative, such as mammograms, OBGYN, your adult physical, your child wellness your uh, colonoscopy if you're uh, lucky enough to be above the age of 51. Um, 
those are all preventative procedures that are provided at 100% because of the Affordable Care Act. Um, so there is no copay, there's no upfront cost to you. Uh, it's a way of creating a healthier, healthier society because we want people to go in and do those preventative uh, health maintenance procedures so they can they can pick up on something say, in case a major underlying health issue is there. Hi, Ed. How you doing? <laughs> what was that thing you called the Affordable Health Care Plan? Affordable Health Care Act, yeah. That's, is that the Obama thing? That's AKA coined Obamacare. Uh -huh. yes. Yep, that's it. So that thing's here to stay, basically. Uh, we will find out here in a, in a week or so, gotcha. but uh, we won't get into <laughs> politics. <laughs> um, now, where you might have a zero deductible uh, occurrence as well would be if you have a copay involved. So say you went to your, your primary care physician and, and you have a $35 copay. Mm -hmm. For that office visit, visit specifically, you have a $35 copay that you pay and there's no deductible involved unless you get referred to some, some other procedure or you know, an outpatient facility for something else. Well, how does, doesn't the deductible work, it starts over at the beginning of uh, the year, like I know I'm retired Air Force and mm -hmm. mine starts over one October is right. when we start over. How does it work with, with your plans? When does that one year period hit? Either way, you can, you can do a plan period year where you have essentially the first of a certain month or the 15th of a certain month and it'll carry over the, the max out of pocket or your benefit period extends say from 10-1 through 10-1 of the next year. You can also do a yearly, a calendar year deductible where it starts over the first of the year every year, which is the most common one. So it's not set to just one date? It no. Once given. you decide on one, though, it will maintain for the remainder of the okay. group policy. Okay. So. Well, I had written down a couple of things. Let's see. I just, I don't want to forget anything. Sure. Hold on one second. Yeah. We got to put all this stuff together here so we can get it on the fish so y'all know what's going on here. Oh. So we did all the zesting. That's the hardest part of this whole thing. Please don't drop it. <laughs> and uh, now put this in here first. Put the zest on top. So we'll start with that one. Now you just throw it all in this little food little processor and mix it up a little bit. <laughs> oh, okay, here we go. Gotcha. Got it? I want to do it. Oh, all that work is gone. <laughs> I did all the work here. She does all the work and you get all the fun, Ed, huh? Yeah. No. Okay, you can hit the pulse button on and off. I Go feel ahead. so honored. Yes. <laughs> That's pulse. Pulse. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, fabulous, fabulous. Okay. <laughs> and you wonder why. <laughs> all right. So now, a, sixth, a sixth grader can do it with supervision. Right, right. <laughs> now all you do is just put this on top of the awesome salmon over there, which I will bring over here. I just touch no my magic. hands. Sprinkle in it or anything? Just I a little bit of colors. I have to touch it with my hands. And like here's that. the salmon that we got. Nice. Just went and picked it up. Caught it yourself. <laughs> and yes. And it and everything. <laughs> and then you just set this on top. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, sweetie. Set this on? Mm -hmm. Just break this. No, no, no. Put your hand in it and press it down on top. Put your hand in it. Okay. Get your hands in it. You wash your hands, right? <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Just press it on top. Mm -hmm. Now, here's what's kind of weird because we're always throwing food away if it's been sitting out for 10 minutes, it seems like. But the instructions say you put this on top and let it sit for 45 minutes. Then once that's oh. done, you crank on the broil. This is what's easy about it. You, when you turn it on, you turn it on for two minutes. Then you slip this in there for eight minutes and then you're done. You take it out and let it sit for eight minutes and you're ready to go. So that's how easy it is to cook. That's what's great about this whole process. It's not hard at all. So you put it on broil, let the broil wait for two minutes. After this is set for 45 minutes, it's out in the regular room temperature. And then you cook it for eight or when this gets kind of glistening golden and then you let it sit for eight minutes. You don't have to push so hard, love. <laughs> you yeah. said? Just like tenderizing it. I'm yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just I mean, pat it, pat it, <laughs> like your puppy dog. <laughs> there we go. Good so that's how it is. So we'll finish this up, and we'll send you guys over there before we get out of hand. <laughs> okay, moving back over here. Yeah, one other question. Um, so what I was trying that's cool. you don't want to, get to too find much out, a you friend had asked like me about in-network, out-of-network, uh, mm -hmm. and I tried to explain it to her, but maybe you could do a better job. Sure. Essentially, an in-network provider means that they have a certain discounting set up with the carrier. And so the reason they, they have in-network and out of network is because they try to steer an employee to go to an in-network provider because not only will it cost the 
Uh, usually it'll cost the employee less money, especially when coinsurance comes into play. Uh, but it also costs the carrier less money because they've got a certain discounting set up with that provider. So it's very important, though, to look on your benefit summary for certain procedures because some things, especially on like an HMO or a limited network uh, plan, if you go out of network, some procedures you may have no coverage at all. Mm. So, so and that's, you need to that's check an that out. You definitely you want to take it. a look at it. And that's part of what we do when we come in with Ed and, and we explain to the entire group and, and all the employees as far as what their benefit summary entails. And from what I understand, that's pretty standard practice yes. across the board. Yeah. So, Okay, well that covers that one then. Um, I guess the other things, you know how you always see on TV that commercials about different health care plans and everything, and you know, you'll, you'll see the little old lady, you know, well, what about my pre-existing condition, mm -hmm. you know, well, right. how do they handle the people who have pre-existing conditions? Well, there's actually, uh, once again, thanks to the Affordable Health Care Act, uh, there's no pre-existing on under 19, which is great uh, for children. Um, and then as far as pre-existing coverage on an adult's plan or an employee's plan, as long as they have had credible coverage for the prior 12 months, pre-existing will not come into play or, or uh, take effect. However, if they've had more than a 62-day lapse in coverage, then pre-existing will take, uh, take play in their new policy. However, if they did have coverage within those last 12 months, maybe for six months, but they had more than a 62-day gap, that six months is going to be prorated to their new plan. So essentially, they'd only have another six months of, of, of a waiting period, depending on the, the benefits. So. OK, so it gets a little bit comp more complicated. Yeah, and that's on a case-by-case -case basis. Right. Like I said, when we hang around afterwards, and usually I just had a question yesterday about an employee that we were visiting on, came out in the hallway and said, hey, I've got this going on. You know, when do you think I'll be eligible for coverage? And does the, the coverage, is it uh, good for when they go out of state, you know, when they're traveling? Absolutely. Uh, our carriers that we work with, um, some of them are national, others are recognized national but might be affiliate companies state in different states, but they all uh, within their company share, share networks, so they do have out-of-network providers. Even some of the carriers have worldwide uh, providers that are considered in-network, such as Europe, etc. Okay, well, that's good. Yeah. We can plan a trip to Europe and we'll be covered, right? Yeah, yeah. and uh, essentially the best thing to do is always get online when you've got your policy in place, punch in that zip code for wherever, wherever you're looking to go and search for an in-network provider. You can also call the carrier and a lot of times they'll shop around for that procedure or for whatever you're looking to do or look for a, a, a physician for you to visit hmm. that's in-network. Okay. Uh, and then one last thing that I was wanting to ask you about, uh, and I don't know, Ed probably has a few questions, but what is covered uh, as far as out-of-pocket? I, I, I don't really understand what they mean by the out-of-pocket expenses. You know, yeah. where, where does that come into play? And the, also, was is there an annual cap on out-of-pocket expenses, a maximum amount they pay out of their own pocket? Absolutely. Just like at the beginning of our conversation when I was talking about those four things that people worry about, mm -hmm. that is your out-of-pocket expenses, your deductible, your copay, your co-insurance, those all go into the out-of-pocket max, okay? What I didn't mention was your prescription drug card. If you've got a prescription drug card, any of those co-payments, $10, $30, $50 that you pay when you pick up a prescription, those do not go towards your out-of-pocket maximum. Oh, okay. But that out-of-pocket maximum is throughout that policy benefit period. Then it starts over again, so either the first of the year or, if, like you were saying, October 1st the following year. Okay, good. Okay? Great. Well, great, guys. Well, you did awesome like I thought you all would. <laughs> and Serena. <laughs> all right, great questions. We got so. that bad in there. <laughs> all right, well, the wrap. Good. Yeah. yeah. What time ready? Are we <laughs> Once we get out of here, we'll cook it up the house. All right, so let me just wrap this up because there was all kinds of information, and now I want to bring it back to, to make it simple for you. If you're, an, if you're an owner or if you're an employee and there's like at least four working there, you can just go to my website, and it's real simple just to get a quote from us. And it's going to be a quote, like a homeowner's quote, an auto quote. You just hop on the web page, and all we want to know is like if the name, male or female, and your age, and we'll shoot you back a quote. Now, we need at least four of those, four people in the group to make it work. And then if you like the price, then you can call us, and then we'll do the next step of coming out with Luke and going to all the fine details and getting all your answers. But I'll just try to make it as simple as possible for everybody to, because there's so many out there that don't have any insurance. And that was killing me with my staff. I love them, and they didn't have insurance, but I was afraid of the price. So my goal here is to give you information to let you know, one, thank you for all the homeowners and auto people that come here, because thanks to that 
fancy word you use, it's already in effect. You can get these good deals down these great rates now. So other than that, from Serena and my beautiful bride Barbara and Luke, I want to say God bless and y'all have a wonderful day. Thank you. Goodbye. There's a plaza in downtown Pensacola where the American flag was first raised over Florida. That's where you'll find Jackson Steakhouse. Rich in history, rich in flavor. We hand select only the finest ingredients. Grain fed wet aged beef, fresh local seafood, and combine them in ways that have won awards far and wide. It could just be your best meal ever, or at least until the next time you visit. Jackson Steakhouse. The Levin Papantonio Law Firm has been representing injury victims for over 50 years. If you've been injured in an automobile accident, been hurt at work, or have a social security disability claim, our attorneys are here to help you and protect your rights. Remember, here at Levin Papantonio, we never charge a fee or cost unless we make a recovery for you. So, before you settle your case, visit us at levinlaw.com or call our offices for a free consultation. Effective Monday, November 5th, 2012, at approximately 4 p.m. Central Standard Time, WFBD Blab TV will begin broadcasting in the high-definition format. In some instances, this may require over-the-air viewers to rescan the digital converter equipment to receive the enhanced signal. If you have any questions regarding this improvement, please call WFBD at 251-809-3013 or Blab TV at 850-432-898. There's a plaza in downtown Pensacola where the American flag was first raised over Florida. That's where you'll find Jackson Steakhouse. Rich in history, rich in flavor. We hand select only the finest ingredients. Grain fed wet aged beef, fresh local seafood, and combine them in ways that have won awards far and wide. It could just be your best meal ever, or at least until the next time you visit. Jackson Steakhouse.